Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here, talking about Israel. As we are preparing for the spring holiday season, as you know, in Hermes Academy, we do a lot of classes associated with those feast days like uh, Passover, Unleavened Bread, and First Fruits. And one class we was working on is what are the penalties for not doing the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Feast of Passover or the Feast of First Fruits? And so this class is actually going to be in two parts because it's talking about, as you see right here in verse 15 of chapter. Chapter 12 out of the book of Exodus how you can get cut off from Israel by not performing the feast of unleavened bread now you hear about this part about being cut off in the scripture in several places but I want to show you in another place down here in 19 it's also talking about unleavened bread and how if during the feast of unleavened bread you do partake in leavening you will be cut off from the congregation of Israel but then down here in chapter 31 and verse 14 is talking about the Sabbath day and I want to point out this difference down here is talking about the Sabbath day it says for whosoever does any work therein that soul shall be cut off from among his people and what I believe this is doing is helping us to understand that when he says Israel and he's saying his people he's talking about the same thing now the reason why I'm bringing this out is because when I believe as you see right here he says cut off from among his people he's his people those people that he's talking about is Israel and how if we um, uh, break the Sabbath day we, we, we will be cut off from his people and his people being Israel as well as unleavened bread and how if we um, uh, have any leaven in doing the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we will be cut off from Israel. So before I jump into this part, talking about um, all of the rules and, and such on how you can get cut off, I want to jump over and show you who Israel is coming out of the Third Testament of the Bible. Some of you may not be familiar with the Third Testament of the Bible. It's the third part in the trilogy, but you can find some links to it down in the description. You can find a free PDF that you can download to your uh, electronic device there, maybe even print it off if you wanted to, or you can get an audio book that you can listen to. You can also download that in MP3 form. If you need help with that, let me know. I can point you to a software program that you can download it. But we're going to use the uh, Third Testament of the Bible to get an understanding of who Israel is. Now, I'm searching for the word Israel in the Third Testament. There's about 102 hits in here. But there's about there's some of them that I want to bring out just to help identify who Israel is. So that we can get an understanding of what it is that we're being cut off from, who these people are. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to keep up with the uh, chapters um, that these verses are coming out of. This is that uh, part of that free PDF I was telling you about that you can download. Um, I've actually downloaded it and converted it over to a Word document. But I'm just going to go read some of the verses to help you get an understanding of who Israel is. Now, down here it says... But you who recognize intimately that the essence of this word is the same that Israel received on Mount Sinai and that the multitudes received from the lips of Jesus in the second era shall be those who with your worship and your works teach that the divine law should not be forgotten in order to comply with the foolish traditions that do not benefit the spirit okay now this is one hint and we, and we probably should be writing these down um, as we identify um, who Israel is it says Israel will be those who recognize intimately that the essence of this word is the same as received on Mount Sinai um, this is talking about the third testament of the Bible and back there in the book of Exodus where they um, got those laws back there in Mount Sinai. He's saying that Israel will be those who recognize that the essence is the same. And by essence he means spirit, core, heart, crux, kernel, soul, quintessence or principle. So you understand that he's basically the same message that you got in the Old Testament and he even goes on to say... Um, received from the lips of Jesus in the second era so that would be the second testament or the new testament are the same message or they has the same 
principles as you are getting in the third testament and it is israel who will recognize that um i did want to point this part out here as talking about how israel will not recognize themselves um and so there will be people who will be listening to this video um at the beginning not understanding that they are israel um, but hopefully by the end, you'll know exactly who Israel is and you'll be knowing, you know, uh, that you are a member of Israel. That's even why you're even listening to this. We got out of the last verse. And that's why you're even listening to the Third Testament or paying any attention to it at all is because you are spiritual Israel. But it says down here, the men of religions and sects upon saying that Israel is divided, that Israel does not know itself and is weakened, will seek motives to tear away this principal jewel, to tear away the ark of this new covenant and say the next day that they are the true envoys before humanity and the representatives of divinity. This is talking about the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug down here when he realizes that you know Israel doesn't recognize itself or know who it is he's going to use that in order to separate them and then he's going to come back and say that he is the true envoy that he is the true prophet but you know we, we find out in other places how you can tell you know who's the real prophet and who's the false prophet so he, he'll fool many but he won't fool Israel. Israel will know who they are Right here it says, for part of the people of spiritual Israel is scattered over the globe and wherever any one of them is found, he or she receives my charity, fills my presence and is sustained by my bread and awaits me without knowing where I might come nor in what form yet they wait. All right. So now you can bounce this off of your personal life and you you you'll recognize some of this. If you meditate on what is saying there, you'll know that, yeah, you have been waiting on him. You have been feeling his charity and his presence and that kind of thing. Down here, um, it says, when I speak of my children, Israel, the people of God, I've referred to those who have brought a spiritual mission to earth, those who made known my law, those who proclaimed me, those who were faithful, those who proclaimed the existence of the living God, those who perpetuated the seed of love and those who knew how to recognize in the son, the word and the presence of the father. These are those that form the people of God, that is Israel, the strong, the faithful, the prudent Israel. That is my legion of soldiers, faithful to the law, faithful to the truth. This is who Israel is, you know, faithful to the law, faithful to the truth. This is what separates um, Israel from the rest of the people out there. You would call them Gentiles. Um, this would be the difference between the Gentile nations or the Samaritan nations. Israel is different. These guys are strong, faithful, and prudent. Again, right here, he says, In this time, the spirit of real Israel vibrates everywhere. They are the spirits that fill my presence, that await my coming, and trust in my justice. While the rest of the world seems to be tied up into materialism or fanaticism or idolatry and that kind of thing, again, Israel is different. All right, let me point this out right quick. It says, the tribes of the Israel of the spirit are very numerous. From each I will select 12,000 and shall mark them on their foreheads. But the people of Israel are not limited to 144,000. The chosen people is infinite. So there are many people who are watching this video who understand that they are candidates to be of the the 144,000 but not everybody there's some other ones that don't really recognize that particular calling they may, may recognize that they have a different calling on their life but they do know that they are of the chosen people and that's what he's saying right here is that Israel is not limited to 144,000 the chosen people is infinite. You remember that multitude of people that were there with the 144,000? So there will be a lot more of the children of Israel there on that day. Now, look at this part right here. He says, the master taught you in the second era that many are called, but few are chosen. And of Israel, 
and all Israel shall be called, but from among them I will mark out 144,000. So if you feel the calling or if you feel a calling on your life, it's probably because you are Israel. Okay, now I wanted to bring this part out because there's still may be some disbelief out there it says remember Israel awaiting the Messiah when they had him in front of their eyes they divided into believers and deniers of my truth this is talking about in the second era when you had um, the Messiah that was walking around um, some believed that he was the Messiah and some looking at him right in his face didn't even believe that he was the Messiah at all and they denied him and so what it's talking about is how even in this time you're going to have a division between those who will believe at first and those who will believe and those who will deny. They will eventually catch on. But, you know, you have some hard headed people out there like myself, you know, who, who need significant proof before they'll believe anything. So give them time. Pray for them. They'll, they'll catch up. They are still Israel, just a little slower than the rest of us. Slower to believe, that is. Look right here, it says, Your destiny, Israel, has always been to convey to the world new messages and revelations. That is why sometimes you are doubtful whether you are believed. This is the message for Israel, and this is why it's so important for um, present day Israel, is because we have, you know, these new revelations, these new messages that the world needs to embrace. If they plan on surviving the tribulation, they're going to have to understand the teachings that the Father is trying to put out. And so he's, he has people to, to help him with that mission. And those people are Israel. Now, look at this part right here. It says, today you know that in your bosom I have caused the people of Israel to be reincarnated. This I reveal to you. Understand that the seed that breathes in your being and the inner light that guides you is the same that I poured out since the first era over the house of Jacob. Talking about reincarnation, and that's how this all works, is you had those individuals out there, about two million people that was out there with Moses out there in the wilderness, and when you read the books like Exodus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, you kind of get an idea that the Father wasn't talking to those people way back there in about 1500 BC but he was actually talking to a present day people and he was by way of reincarnation we are that people that was standing back there in Mount Horb and Mount Moriah and Mount Sinai you look right here he says you are Israelites of the spirit you possess spirituality the seed of Abraham Isaac and Jacob you are the branches of the blessed tree that gives both shade and fruit to humanity. Israel has an important mission. Um, they're a little bit battered these days. I can, I can I only speak for myself, I guess. But you have to understand that you know they do have a, um, a, a very serious mission to help humanity in these end times. And so it's important that they you know be tried by the fire a little bit. They have to go through, they have to be tempered. They have to go through some stuff too, especially if they want to be the leaders in such tribulous times. All right, let me point this out down here. It says, Israel is a word that has a spiritual significance. And that name I give to you so that you may keep in mind that you form part of the people of God. For Israel is not any people of the earth, but a world of spirits. Um... Talking about how Israel is not a um, doesn't point to a race of people, but sport, but points to a spirit of people. This is the last one we'll look at from the third testament. It says, "Yesterday Israel was a people on the earth. Today it is a multitude scattered across the earth. Tomorrow the people of God will be formed by all the spirits, and in perfect harmony together with the Father they will form the divine family." So now. What this is pointing to is the post-tribulation era where it says tomorrow it will be everybody. Everybody's going to be the people of God. But even but today, 
um, the people of God, the Israel of today are scattered across the, the entire earth. And the reason for that is so that they can help. You know, there's people, you, you know, you would have Israel in, in all places of the earth, maybe except the Antarctica. You would have uh, some of these members scattered there so that they can help um, uh, humanity to survive in the far reaches of the world. So now I hope you understand who Israel is, you know, I hope you understand that you are Israel, you know, even though there are going to be people who are going to try to convince you that you're not um, Israel, uh, people who will be in disbelief. Hopefully by that, you know and recognize who you are. But let me change gears a little bit here. As some of you have just found out you are Israel. Let me show you how you can get cut off from Israel. Like we started this video looking at over here how you can be cut off. We saw a few minutes ago that you can be cut off from Israel by not keeping the Feast of Unleavened Bread correctly. By, had, by partaking in that week-long feast, partaking in leavening. And, you know, I, I, I get into that in other classes. I believe that's why they placed Easter right in the middle of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's, it's like, okay, so that's the first feast of the year, or the second feast of the year since Passover would be the first. So that is the second feast of the year with Passover being first. But you, you see right here, you can get cut off if you partake in leavening. And we found out over there in the New Testament that the that the leavening is um, the doctrine of the church or something like that. So for them to be talking about Easter bunnies and Easter eggs right there in the middle of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, I believe is being done intentionally to get people cut off. I mean, it's like making people drink blood or something like that because... People are unaware of what's going on and they may have accidentally kept the feast of Passover. You know, um, we do have the spirit inside of us that could be leading us to do those things um, correctly. But then when we hop down there to the church and go on that Easter egg hunt, then, you know, we're, we're actually getting ourselves cut off during the first part of the, the first part of the year. At the beginning of the year, you have already been cut off and, you know. I'm, I don't know who would argue. I, I can only go by what I believe. And I believe that you will stay cut off at least till atonement day, if not cut off for the rest of the year. But let's look at some other ways you can get cut off. Again, um, Exodus chapter 12 and 19 is talking about how if you eat leaven during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you will be cut off. So I guess it makes it important to understand what leavening is. But like we said a few minutes ago, you have to go to the New Testament and look at what the Messiah was talking about, about what leavening is to, to understand what it is that you have to be separated from. But what it boils down to is church doctrine. Okay, so down here in chapter 30, verse 33, you can see that you can get cut off for making this particular anointing oil. Um, this oil was supposed to be a sacred kind of oil made of a certain composition. And if you just made this stuff just to be smelling good, yep, you'll get in trouble. Cut off from your people. But we established at the beginning of this video how when he says being cut off from your people, he's talking about being cut off from Israel. Like it says right here in Exodus chapter 31 and 14, like right here in Exodus chapter 31 and verse 14, how we're saying that if anybody defileth the Sabbath day will be cut off from his people. Well, that's the same thing that it was saying over there about unleavened bread. If you defile the feast of unleavened bread, you will be cut off from Israel. And up here, you defile the Sabbath day, you're going to be cut off from his people. That is putting the people and Israel as being the same thing. All right, down here in... The book of Leviticus chapter 7 and verse 20 is talking about how if you were to eat of the peace offering with uncleanness upon you, you will be cut off from your people. And you say, well, what does that mean? What, what, what would that be to be cut off from your people? OK, well, now, if you think about it, if you think about yourself as being spiritual Israel and now you're going to be cut off, which cut off is what would you say cut off means? Stay? Uh, separated. 
Yeah, separated. So you, so you actually um, not in relate. I, I said a few minutes ago, and I may be wrong for this, but it's like it's turn. It's going to turn you into a heathen if you're not Israel. Um, then that must make you a Gentile, right? And uh, we know that a Gentile is, is a person who doesn't know the Lord, or the same as a heathen. So when you do any of this stuff that's going to get you cut off. It could essentially be turning you back into a heathen or making you act like a heathen or something like that. I don't know. I would say that you would stop following the doctrines of Christ because when Israel, when you think of Israel, you think of ones who follow the doctrines and teachings of the Father. But when you think of a heathen, they do not. So when you become separated, it seems to me that you will stop following um his doctrines his teachings okay and so i believe you're right now down here in um verse 25 it says for whosoever eateth the fat of the beast of which men offer an offering made by fire unto the lord even the soul that eateth it shall be cut off from among his people uh, shall be cut off from his people so this is so here's another way by eating um by eating the fat that's supposed to go before the Lord, you're going to be cut off. But look at this one down here. It, in 27, it says, Whoso, Whatsoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. And this is why I said a few minutes ago like, that um, putting Easter in the middle of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is kind of like making you eat blood. Because as you see, eating blood is another way to get cut off from your people. Now, this may come as strange to people who are talking about, you know, eating blood and stuff. But, you know, a lot of the um, people in the entertainment industry, from what I understand, you know, as part of some of the rituals that they have to go through in order to stay in the positions that they're in is they have to drink blood. I ain't going to call no names, but I heard that a few of them people be drinking blood on a regular. But you have to watch out because, you know... When 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 you go down there and order that big juicy steak down there at the steakhouse, have they taken the time to get all of the blood out? I know a lot of times when I go, you know, eat with my family at places like that, they always want their steaks well done. They want them cooked, you know, until they really, really brown. And, you know, because they say they don't like to see any blood. It's like, wait a minute. You can't cook blood out. You got to you got to wash that blood out. So. You know, you can't wash, you can't cook it out. You have to wash it out. So you got to be careful where you eat, because if those people aren't taking the time to get that blood out, you could actually be getting yourself cut off from Israel, getting yourself cut off from your people. Here it is for all you guys who are hunters or who raise your animal for slaughtering. What does it say right here? And bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer an offering unto the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord. Blood shall be imputed unto that man. He has shed blood and that man shall be cut off from among the people. This one down here. It's talking about how if you make a burnt offering or a sacrifice of any type, that sacrifice has to be to the Father. It has to be offered to the Lord. Um, it has to come before, before the tabernacle of the congregation. So, in other words, if you make a sacrifice to any other God or any anything like that, you will be cut off from your people. You will be cut off from Israel. Now, down here in chapter 18, it's talking about lying with beasts uh, as an abomination and as a sure way to get you cut off from among your people. This one is talking about when you make a sacrifice and uh, eat it on the third day, if you make a burnt or if you make an offering made by fire and you eat of it on the third day, you will be cut off from among your people. Now, down here in chapter 20 and 17, talking about if you were to see the nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your mother, or the daughter of your father, how that will get you cut off from among your people. And then it's talking about down here in 18, it says, uncover the f fountain of her blood. Talking about the lady flowers there. Um, that's a good way to get you uh, cut off from your people if you were to um, lie with her. 
And I was talking about having your uncleanliness on you when you go off unto the holy things will get you cut off. This will be going into the uh, tabernacle or the inner courts or something like that. Now you're getting down here in Leviticus chapter 23 and 29 when it's talking about the Feast of Atonement Day. So if you don't keep Atonement Day, you will be cut off from your people. But look down here in verse 30, he says, and, whosoever, and whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, that soul will I destroy from among his people. I always thought that was significant how he went from being cut off to being destroyed. Now you get down here in the book of Numbers and it's talking about Passover and how not keeping Passover down here in uh, verse 13 of chapter 9, how not keeping Passover will get you cut off from among your people. It says because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season, that man shall bear his sin. This is why we have to be really careful when it comes to these feasts particularly um, feasts like Passover and unleavened bread um, because they have to be done in a certain season and if we somehow you know don't get the season correctly um, we could actually be cut off you know you can't just do Passover when you want you have to do it on the exact day so you know let's pray for some fair weather you know at the beginning of that uh, month so we can actually go out and see the moon for ourselves we can verify it and we can get it done ourselves so everybody pray for clear skies now down here in numbers 15 and uh, 30 again he's talking about atonement and he's talking about people who may act presumptuously that yeah, those people can end up getting cut off from among his people, separated from Israel. End up acting like heathen. What does he say down here in 31? Because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment. That soul shall utterly be cut off. His inequity shall be upon him. Now, down here, you know, last time I went to a funeral, um, you know... I don't know if my some of my relatives were proud that they weren't scared of dead bodies and they was talking about how they was touching the body and touching this and touching that. And I told them you need to cut that out because, you know, you could get cut off. You know, look right here in verse uh, 13 of chapter 19 of the book of Numbers. He says, whosoever touches the dead body of a man that is dead and purifieth not himself defileth the tabernacle of the Lord and that soul shall be cut off from Israel because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him he shall be unclean his uncleanliness is yet upon him and so you know these individuals are proud they were touching these bodies you know I was sitting there in fear like I don't know if I could touch a dead body of a human but it doesn't matter you know my fear is is not the important thing it ain't so much as I'm scared that dead body gonna do something to me as I'm afraid I'm gonna get cut off from Israel because I ain't got no water separation here that's that's holy water and we ain't talking about that stuff down at the Catholic Church either we're talking about real holy water which involves you know burnt red heifers and cedar wood and all of that kind of stuff I don't, ain't nobody got that stuff around you gotta cleanse yourself with it you know you need to stop touching them dead bodies you're gonna get cut off because there's uh, like you see down here in chat in verse 20 it's talking about how you have a certain time to cleanse yourself with this water separation seem like they'd have some of that down there at the mortuary but they probably don't read the Bible like they should okay now here's the last verse that I'm gonna talk about right here this is coming out of the book of Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 7 it says, for every one of the house of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separated himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his inequity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I the Lord will answer him by myself. And I will set my face against that man and I will make him a sign and a proverb and I will cut him off from the midst of my people and ye shall know that I am the Lord.
Now, we got a lot going on here. Um, these people are getting cut off from the midst of my people. But what I believe it boils down to is how it says here how they are separating themselves from him. They're separating themselves from the Father. And they're setting up idols in their heart. So they, they don't want anything to do with the real Father. And they're setting up idols in their heart. And then it goes on to say that they go to a prophet to inquire concerning him. So instead of going to the Father for themselves, they, they're going to go and find them a prophet to talk to. He says he's going to make a sign and a proverb out of him. And then he will cut him off from the midst of my people. And you will know that I am the Lord. All right. Talking about Israel and talking about how we can get cut off from Israel. So this should be a really interesting class for a lot of people. You know, some people found out that they are Israel and then they found out that they may have already cut themselves off. But the thing is, you know, that's why we do these classes um, so we can learn the era of our ways and we can start to get back on track. And maybe by eliminating a lot of these errors from our life, we can try to get cut back in to the father there.